Good evening, everybody. Oh, you didn't do it. Usually I'd have to make the sign of the cross. That quiets Catholics down all the time. But welcome to our Bread of Life and Our Lady of the Prairie Area Faith Communities mission. We are lucky to begin this year of the parish of our Eucharistic revival by having Daniel Overrider, who is who focuses both on the Eucharist and then on Mary to be here with us. Through his music, his preaching and storytelling, he will guide us these next four nights in our theme, Communion Through Communion, Building an Authentic Catholic Community Through the Eucharist. And so we are happy to see all of you here. It's gonna be so good tonight that you're gonna go home and tell all your friends and neighbors to come tomorrow night. Tomorrow night it starts earlier, so it'll be easier to sell. It starts at seven the rest of the evenings. And so please invite your friends and your neighbors, but we're so glad to be here. And we would like for all of you to welcome our mission guide, musician and preacher, Daniel Oberreiter. Well, thanks a bunch, everybody. I really appreciate you all coming out this evening. It's great to see you all. Um, we're just going to get started with tonight. This first song, it's a song I wrote. Um, my wife and I, we've been married about 12 years. When we first got married, um, she's from California. So we were living down there just a little bit. And uh, this one day, I was just really having a tough time. You know, I'm from Washington from the Northwest. And I was just struggling being far from my family in the Northwest. And uh, I just heard Jesus say to me that, he, that he's, he hadn't left me alone and that he was still with me. In the midst of all the decisions I'd made to that point, he was still with me. And so what I wanna start with tonight is to remind you all that no matter where you're at tonight, on this beautiful evening, Jesus is still with you also and he hasn't left you alone. It doesn't matter what the world thinks of you. It doesn't matter if they call you a fool. Cause there's a reason for this song I sing. You're the one for my hands did bleed, and I could never leave you alone. So many times you think you're on your own, and you're wondering where did I go so wrong. But there's a reason for this song I sing. You're the one my heart still beats and I could never leave you alone and if you think your time has come and gone if you feel like you just can't move on no matter what you do I'll always search for you I could never leave you alone find yourself so far from home and you're wondering where did I go so wrong but in the pain is where you will find me and through your sufferings I'll set you free and I could never leave you alone no I could never leave I could never leave, I could never leave, I could never leave you alone. All right. Thank you. 
All right, this next song is about how when we're at mass, the angels, they surround this altar and all the altars in your uh, parish community. It's called Holy Angels. And you know, we've all brought our angels with us here. And that's wonderful. This song's called Holy Angels. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes with the holy angels from heaven above. Filled with glory, filled with love. death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come beautiful feast day of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a gift it is to be all present here in this beautiful sanctuary that you have. And we always got to acknowledge the fact and the reality that Jesus, the Lord of the universe, is inside that tabernacle. And he's the real reason you're here. Each of you, your hearts have been drawn in a special way, and he is drawing you closer evermore this evening. And so it's such a wonderful gift that we can all come into the presence of Jesus always waiting for us in the Blessed Sacrament. I always say, you know, whenever you drive by a Catholic church, you literally drive by the Lord of the universe, the creator of the stars, and the heavens, and the earth, has humbled himself and taken the form of a little piece of bread. The substance has become his, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Not only does he dine with us and feed us with himself, he remains here. For us so that we can be with him any time of the day we can stop in the answer to all your problems all your problems all your worries and concerns about 50, about 25 feet behind me Jesus the Lord of the universe so let's just put our hands together for our Lord right now because he's the most important one. amen amen 
Okay, so raise your hand if you've heard of a saint called Saint Faustina. Who's heard of Faustina? All right, that's a good amount of you. All right. Hey, so this next song is a song that's based off of some of her writings. Um, if you haven't heard of her, she was a Polish sister. She lived in the 1920s and 30s, and she had this amazing relationship with Jesus that just like I'm sitting here right now and you all can see me, our Lord would just appear to her. And he told her that he has an ocean of mercy for the whole world. That no matter where we've been or what we've done, that he has mercy for us. And that mercy comes especially in the sacrament of reconciliation. Confession. You know, when we go before the priest, we lay down our sins, and we walk out of that confessional completely absolved in a true state of grace. And our Lord told this beautiful saint, Faustina, that Jesus has an ocean of mercy for the whole wide world. What that means is he has an ocean of mercy for Marshall, for Tracy, and all the other little towns around here too that surround this area. Mercy for your families and healing. Another thing about Faustina, you know, when we're at Mass and Father again raises the Eucharist and he he holds our Lord in his hands. It looks like bread, tastes like bread, but it's really Jesus. Well, sometimes when Faustina was at Mass or during adoration, she would see Jesus' face on the Eucharist. Could you imagine if that happened here to you? Right here? If you saw the face of the Lord on the Eucharist? Maybe that doesn't happen to us, but the same reality exists. Jesus is blessing us all and offering us an ocean of mercy on this town and your community. Each of your communities in your faith um, grouping here, you all got Jesus there, the center of your town. Okay, so this song is called Ocean of Mercy, and it's based off the writings of Faustina. Search your heart And search your soul There's no greater love And there's nowhere left to go You've run too far You're afraid of letting go Backs up against the wall, and there's nowhere left to go. And an ocean of mercy. up against the wall and there's nowhere left to go and ocean of mercy is falling down Search your soul There's 
no greater love and there's nowhere left to go ocean of mercy a bunch okay so like I said I'm married I have four boys my oldest son his name is Paolo it's kind of like Paolo <laughs> okay. so everyone on the count of three say Paolo one two three Paolo. good job and then my next boy is Luke and then I got Diego and then our little boy Emilio now Emilio is three years old right now Diego six Luke he's nine now, when Luke was born, um, of course, you know, my wife, she's recuperating there in the bed. She's holding Luke in her arms. And I said to her, let me hold the boy. So I, I held Luke in my hands. And naturally, of course, the first words I said to him, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> you know, just had to let him know who his daddy was. Okay, now Diego, Diego was born on New Year's Eve, okay? New Year's Eve. Um, now, they say babies, when they're in the womb, that, you know, they know when daddy's around, or you can kind of, you know, knock on mama's tummy, and, you know, they'll kick and some stuff like that. And I was like, well, is that really true? And I was like, well, I'm going to do a little experiment here, because I'm going to find out something here, if that's really true. So... I'm here to testify it is true, because when Diego was in my wife's tummy, in her womb, I would get closer and be like, let, let me talk to the boy. And so I'd, I'd knock, on, knock, knock on her tummy and be like, hey, you, are you listening? And I'd be like, okay, now listen up. We know you're coming around, you know, New Year's Eve. So there's this thing in the United States of America that we call the IRS. And somehow he got the memo, all right? <laughs> okay, I didn't really do that, but anyways. <laughs> Great gift that he is. The children are such a wonderful blessing and a wonderful gift. Um, I just feel like I, uh, you know, usually I do a different song um, at this point in my concerts, but I want to do a, diff a different one than I normally do. Um, maybe if I got time, I'll do the other one too, but just... I was reflecting the other, well, not the other day, but a, about a year ago, I was just praying. And there's that verse in scripture where um, our Lord says, fear is useless. Fear is useless. All that is needed is trust. And our Lord, he just gave me this song. You know, when we're raising kids or in our work or just in everyday life, it's so easy to get caught up in fear. The news, everything is about fear. But Jesus tells us that it's useless. You know, a lot of people struggle with fear. And we all, me too, I can do that too. And I think our Lord, he just gave me this song for that reason. So I'm going to share it with you. My fear is useless. All I need is trust My fear is useless 
All I need is trust When I don't know the way You'll be my saving grace When darkness comes my way I'll call upon your name Jesus So I'll keep holding on And I'll Stand strong until that day comes. Oh, I'm gonna sing my victory song. And my pride is useless. All I need is love. My pride is useless All I need is love So I'll keep holding on And I'll be standing strong Until that day comes Oh, I'm gonna sing my victory song Until that day comes, oh, I will sing my victory song. Yeah, I will keep holding on and will be standing strong until that day. Cause my fear is useless And my pride is useless Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, two more songs here and then um um, I'll talk a little bit, and we'll move into a special time of adoration and have um, a chance for reconciliation as well. But I do want to share one, another song that I wrote um, many years ago. Um, back when I was single, before I met my wife, I used to go uh, swing dancing. Does anybody swing dance at all? <laughs> Maybe just a handful of y'all. Um, well, I, this one night, I went swing dancing in Portland, Oregon. And because uh, I, at the time I was living in Vancouver, Washington, and Portland's right here, and I would go into Portland just on Sunday nights, like a night like this, and I, I met this girl, I asked her to dance with me, and I, I asked her how she was doing, and she said, not so well. So I said, well, what's, what's wrong? And she said, I just broke up with my boyfriend. Now, I was single at the time, and I said, oh, really? <laughs> Tell me more. So I asked her why. Why'd you break up with him? And her words to me were this. She said, I really felt Jesus saying to me that I wasn't supposed to be with him. You know, I was really moved by that. She was willing to walk away from someone she cared about so much because she wanted to follow God's plan. 
She wanted to follow his plan. You know, no matter how young or old we are, Jesus still has a plan for each of us as well. You know, for the young ones in here, when it comes to your vocation, who you're going to get married to, if you're going to be a priest, a sister. But also, too, for us older ones, we're locked into our vocations, and that's a beautiful thing. But Jesus still has a job for each of us, people that only we will meet, things that he's ordained for us all. A plan. So how do we know what that plan is each day as we get up? Well, we got to spend time in silence with our Lord and ask him every morning, Jesus, what do you want from me? We got to turn the cell phone off. We got to turn the iPad off. We got to turn the television off. And then Jesus can speak to our hearts and let us know what his will is for us. And it's a day in and day out. So back to this girl. Um, I got her number after we got to know each other just a little bit. And, uh, you know, I was really moved by the fact that she was willing to walk away from someone she cared about so much because she wanted to follow God's plan. So I went home and I wrote her a song. And I called her up a week later and shared that song with her. And I'm going to share that song with you all now, too. Uh, this song, what it depicts is two people breaking up with each other, but they're breaking up because they want to follow Jesus' plan. There's nothing more important in life than that. So like I said, most of us are probably married or locked into our vocations. This song is also just a song about discerning what is God's will in the midst of our present life and vocations. This song is called The Road. This will be hard for you, but it's just something I must do. When Jesus calls you, must be true, and that is why I'm singing to you. I remember all the times we had, I remember when I held your hand, everything seemed so brand new. The day I will be leaving you And I don't know how But I'm letting go I don't know how But I'm letting go talked about a wedding day I thought that we were meant to be but somehow God got in the way I'm so afraid of letting go so afraid of the unknown fear is never love you see and you deserve so much more and I know right now you don't understand I know right now you don't understand Just one more day I'm sure that I would run away When love and pain become the same 
It's when you know you'll be okay. Our lives are but a passing breath. We're here and then we're late to rest. So I'm giving you this song today, and I know that you'll. So I was driving to a youth rally in my home state of Washington, and I was running kind of late. And so again, I'm, I'm in Vancouver, Washington. I got to get to a town called um, Wenatchee. Has anybody ever heard of Wenatchee, Washington? All right, a few of you all in the back. Yes. Well, it's basically in the middle of nowhere in the state of Washington. Uh, come to think of it, that's a lot like here. No. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, in order to get to Wenatchee, um, you either go up north to Seattle, or else you uh, go east, um, and, and you cut over, and you go, if you go up north, you cut over Seattle, and then go Interstate 90, and you, you go into uh, Wenatchee. Or else you go west into the Columbia River Gorge, you come into Yakima, then you get to Ellensburg, and then Ellensburg, you've got to make a decision. You go around a big mountain range, and you drop into it. There's no straight road that gets you there. But I'm running kind of late, and so I'm looking at my phone, and I decided to go through Yakima into Ellensburg, and I get to Ellensburg, and I got to make that decision. Do I go east or west? And I kept refreshing my phone, and then suddenly my phone said there's a road that goes straight there. And I thought, well, I can read a map. I'm going to take that road that goes straight there, even though my phone said it would take a full hour longer. Ah, that can't be. So I start driving down this road, and I'm, I'm like, yes. I'm going 55 miles an hour, like, yes, I found the fastest route. And then suddenly the road turns completely to gravel. Ugh. I'm down to 25, kind of pushing it on gravel. Like, okay, well, this is why it's going to take a lot longer. But at that point, I was like, well, I can't turn around. I got to keep going. I made my decision. Well, the road starts to get worse and worse. It turns into dirt. And there's a mountain range. And you know, in the Northwest, we got mountains. You guys got hills out here. We got mountains. And then, I'll never forget it, as I'm driving down this road, thinking this is probably a really bad decision, but I gotta keep going. I see these two four-wheel drive trucks, and they're coming the other way. They're looking at me like, what's this guy doing? And they got the gun racks, the shotguns, you know, I can see them, and they got the orange vests. They're coming down from hunting, all right? And mind you, I'm rocking the minivan right now, okay? <laughs> Anyways, I wave and I keep on going. Well, soon the road gets so bad. I'm down to 10 miles an hour, and then literally five miles an hour, and I'm going through basically like an old logging trail. <laughs> so I finally come to my senses, and I stop the car, and I turned around. You know, I share that story because sometimes in our lives, we can find ourselves going down roads that we really don't like, in places that we never thought we would be, doing things that we never thought we would have done. But I want to tell each of you, if you're going down a road that you don't like, you can turn around and change tonight. Sometimes we feel like we're stuck. We're just locked in a rut. 
But Jesus offers a way out of that rut. You know, earlier, I just really felt Jesus saying that he wants to heal families at this mission. Brokenness. Unforgiveness. We feel like we can't forgive. We feel like we can't let go. But in the name of Jesus, we can. In the name of Jesus, we can. If you're going down a road you don't, you don't like, you can change. One more quick story. This is a while back ago, but I was going, I was going to be gone from my family for like a month. We don't do this anymore, but back where I didn't know what I was doing for ministry. I was trying to figure things out, how to do all this stuff. And My wife and I, we got in a big argument, and I didn't know how to fix it. We were just desperately poor at the time, and I just said, I got to go out and tell people about Jesus. So I was going to be gone for a month, traveling across the nation. And we got in a big, big argument beforehand, and I said, I just need a break. I got to go out for a drive. And as I'm driving, I lifted my hand in the air in, the, in, my, in my minivan, and uh, I said, Jesus, I need a reset button. Can you reset this whole thing? Well, there was no reset. I, I, I came back, and I went on that tour. But about two weeks into that tour, I found myself in Michigan, playing at a church. And then afterwards, they had a beautiful adoration chapel where I could just go sit and be with Jesus. And I'll never forget it. I still just, plain as day, I was sitting in that chapel, and our Lord reminded me of that prayer, the reset button. I just heard the Lord say, you know, Daniel, the reset button is called confession. That's where we get things straightened out and reset. You know, whenever we close one door to follow God's plan, He always opens a new one. I've seen that happen in my life when I've walked away from small sins and serious sins. Jesus always opens a new door. But first, we got to take that step. Because, you know, even the little sins we can't take with us to heaven. Either we got to deal with them here on earth or in purgatory. Okay, I'm going to share with you that song I did at Mass, Come Hold My Son. You know, like I said at Mass, I heard Our Lady just say to me, Come hold my boy. eyes have seen his salvation to turtle doves they behold him and she presents him to the world and she won't understand why a sword will pierce her heart but she'll say come hold my son 
out loud, where is my boy? He's gone to serve his father now. His father's house is where he dwells. She won't understand. His father's standing next to him. Come hold my son Come hold my son On the hill of Calvary Woman, behold your son She watches him nailed to a tree. The child she bore grass for air. A loud cry and her heart is pierced. The child she held has gone from her his body hangs without life they take him down from the tree they lay him in his mother's arms quick um, I was praying the rosary uh, right before I wrote that song and like I said I just heard Our Lady say to me come hold my boy so in you know, about real soon here we're going to move into a time of adoration but before we do that um, I just want to encourage you all to pray the rosary as well it's a very powerful prayer to help me pray the rosary um, what I do is I ask the question, how did that feel? As I was writing that song, I was asking Our Lady, how did that feel to hold your boy, to see him die? Our Lady, she's asking us to contemplate deep in our hearts her son in a special, profound way. So, you know, if I'm praying the Sorrowful Mysteries 
walking that journey with Our Lady? I also ask the question, Jesus, how did that feel? You know, our Lord, he's in the garden of Gethsemane, and he knows in less than 24 hours his hands and feet will be pinned to that cross. The scriptures, they tell us that his sweat became like blood. It's an actual medical condition. People, when there's so much anxiety, their sweat becomes like blood, and that's what happened to Jesus. He admitted blood with his sweat. Jesus, how did that feel? Is ten Hail Marys enough to think about that? The second star for mystery, our Lord is scourged blow after blow. And I don't know about you, if you ever want a man, Jesus, why'd you have to be whipped and beaten like that? Well, our Lord told Faustina, that saint I was talking about earlier, that he allowed himself to be whipped and beaten because of sins of impurity. The times are not pure with our thoughts, our actions, and in, in this day of age, we, we see it everywhere. Sins of impurity. You know, Our Lady, she appeared to those three young children in that little town of Fatima oh, a little over 100 years ago. She appeared to three young children. She said, I want you to hold the whole world to know that I'm really here. And She gave us the miracle of the dancing sun. 70,000 people witnessed our sun begin to spin in the sky. Back in Fatima, you can Google it. Our Lady appeared there in 1917. The sun span, spun, spun in the sky and 70,000 people witnessed this. At Fatima, Our Lady asked us all to pray the rosary every day and to spend time with her boy in the Eucharist. But she also said to Lucia, the oldest visionary girl, she said, souls fall into hell like snowflakes because of sins of impurity. Not my words, the words of a concerned mother that you and I can all Google tonight and read. How did that feel, Jesus? To be whipped and beaten. Do you think you need ten Hail Marys to think about that? Is ten Hail Marys enough? The third sorrowful mystery, our Lord is crowned with thorns. As soldiers, they weave that crown of thorns. They put it on his head and they slam it down on his head. And the sweat and the blood mingles together and it comes into his eyes. And then they put that purple cloak on him and it adheres to all his wounds, his old wounds, and then they rip that cloak off. And when they rip that cloak off, it reopens those wounds from the scourging on his back. And that's kind of like what we do sometimes when we sin. We open up Jesus' old wounds again. But we can heal those wounds and our wounds through confession. Is ten Hail Marys enough to think about that? Jesus crowned with thorns. The fourth sorrowful mystery, our Lord carries his cross. He falls three times, yet each time he gets back up. So how did that feel, Jesus? And that cross was heavy. Man, Jesus, why'd you get back up? Why'd you get back up? I think he got back up because he doesn't want to lose you. Jesus would rather die than lose you. So he took that cross all the way to Calvary. If you've fallen, don't be afraid to get back up. If you've fallen in sin, don't be afraid to get back up. His mercy is there. And the fifth sorrowful mystery, Jesus dies on the cross. And his mother Mary is standing there and she stands at the foot of each of your crosses too. She stands at the foot of each of your crosses. So go to your mother. Now as we think of Jesus on that cross, we can think of the nails in his hands and his feet and how that must have felt. So just for a moment, I want to invite everyone just to close your eyes and not worry about anyone around you. Go ahead, just close your eyes. And in your mind, think of a crucifix. Maybe you got one at home. Now just for a moment, take the body of Jesus off that cross so all you see is the wood of the cross. And I want you to think of your best friend, the person that's closest for you. And what if, just for a moment, instead of Jesus on that cross, you saw your friend up there on that cross? See the friend 
the nails in their hands and feet, see the blood pouring from their side, and you ask your friend, why? Please tell me, why are you doing this? And the only words they can say to you, I'm dying because I want to be with you. I'm really dying because I just want to be with you. That's what Jesus says to each of us tonight. I died, I took nails in my hands because I just want to be with you. Won't you come spend more time with me here in the Eucharist? I still want to be with you. That's why he gave us this feast day. He still wants to be with us. So let us ponder that the rest of this evening. We're going to move now into a time of adoration. The Lord of the universe is going to be right on this altar. I'm going to move out of the way. Just let him speak to your heart this evening. This beautiful feast day of Corpus Christi. Let Jesus reign in your heart. Pour out everything to him. Your worries, your concerns, your sorrows. He will touch you. He will speak to your heart this evening. So I'll go ahead and kneel. Before we begin adoration, we'll let you know that during our time of adoration, there will be four priests available for reconciliation. Each night we'll have reconciliation, so if you're not ready tonight, we still have three more. Father Denny will be in his usual place. Father Sean will be in my usual place. Father Andy will be in the sacristy, and Father Paul will be here by the organ. Feel free to go up whenever you would like. And fathers, if you want to get ready. Saving victim, open wide the gate of heaven to all below. Our foes press on from every side. Your aid supply, your strength bestow. To your great name be endless praise. Immortal Godhead, one in three. O oh, grant us endless length of days in our true native land with thee. Amen.
nation falling, this great sacrament we hail. Over ancient forms of worship, newer rites of grace prevail. Faith will tell us Christ is present when our human senses fail. To the everlasting Father and the Son who made us free, and the Spirit God proceeding from them each eternally, be salvation, honor, blessing, might and endless majesty. Amen. You have given them bread from heaven, having within it all sweetness. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of our suffering and death. May your our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. You can be seated. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Okay, so uh, real quick, I'm going to do one last song, and i got to apologize. I wish we had a little more time for adoration. But that's my fault, because I talk too much. So what that means is you got to come back tomorrow night. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. I promise we'll have more time for adoration and more time for confessions as well. Hey, this, um, this evening we're going to take up a free will offering. 
And um, we're actually going to do that every, every evening of this. But tonight's, that, the free will offering just goes to me and taking care of my family. Um, if you're interested in donating, that really helps us out. Um, if you're interested in donating with a credit card, I think at the end of the pews, there's, uh, there's some forms. If you do that, just, just hand it directly to me so that I, I keep it real safe. Um, but there's no pressure whatsoever. It's not what this is about. God always provides for us and our family. And I know throughout the week, too, Father's going to be taking up a collection, too, to support your, your, your faith communities here. So that's really important, too. So wherever you feel called to, to donate, that's fine. Um, so we'll, we'll do that now if ushers want to do that at this point. And uh, I'll sing one last song. And uh, it's going to be a great week, okay? I'm going to let you know that. We're just getting started. Jesus wants to do so much. I just really feel that in my heart here with your community. Okay, this song um, is called I Have Fought the Good Fight. And it's based off the writings of St. Paul to St. Timothy. And that's what I want to leave you with. good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and from now on a merited crown awaits me. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and from now on a merited crown awaits me. As for me, I offer myself to the end of gifts to my friends and a witness to faith. And our judge, I know that he'll crown me with peace of victory. Reef. is waiting for me. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and from now on, a merited crown awaits me. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and from now on, a merited crown awaits me. As for you, be faithful to what you receive forever believe because in Christ you'll succeed and grow strong strong in the word that you hear till Christ shall appear and draw us on near I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith, and from now on, a merited crown awaits me. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and from now on, a merited crown awaits me. writing to Timothy and he's saying, I fought that good fight. I finished the race because he knows he's going to die soon. And literally St. Paul gets his head taken off for Jesus and the Holy Catholic Church. So what I want to leave you with tonight is simply this here in Marshall and your faith communities that surround here. Fight the good fight yourself. Never be afraid to stand up for your Catholic faith. You know, I think of Mother Teresa. She was one person. Yet she changed the world. St. Teresa of Calcutta changed the world. What if there's one person here tonight so on fire for Jesus? 
That one person could change Marshall. That one person could change Marshall and all the towns around here. Mother Teresa changed the world. It only takes one of you. But what if we all walked out here tonight on fire for Jesus? I'm looking at about 200 people. You guys could change this town for Jesus, amen? 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 Amen. 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 All right, well, great. Come back tomorrow night, and that's what we're going to talk about. Changing the town, the community here for Jesus in the Catholic Church. Okay? So fight the good fight. Keep the faith. Tomorrow evening, we'll be rocking it. 7 o'clock. I think there's Mass. 5.30, right? 5.30 Mass. As for you, be faithful to what you've received. Forever believe, because in Christ you'll succeed. Oh, and grow strong, strong in the word that you hear, till Christ shall be. God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow.